So tonight, the title is Lay It Aside. Lay It Aside. And guess what this is going to help us do? Nope. Yeah. Do the greater works. Ah, see? Lay it aside is going to help us do the greater works. We're going somewhere right now. Let's go. Let's go. Who, who, who might know a scripture we're going to get to? Ah, and snares us. Weights and sins that snare us. We're going to get there. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. We're going to get there. So, we're going to talk about lay, laying aside sin. Which, is sin okay for the believer? Is it, is it all approved now by God because we're saved? It's just all approved, right? Just do whatever you want. Oh, you did? Oh, your story. Oh, hey, you steal my thunder? <laughs> you know what I mean. It's like when Karin gets up and gives a word of encouragement, I'm like, you stole my thunder. That was you just took my whole message. What? What do I do now? Yeah, she added to it. That's right. She, she uh, what do you call that? Uh, amp- amplified it? Amplified it. Emphasized it. So let's start in 1 Corinthians 5, 1. 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians, of course, we know is written to the Corinthians. <laughs> And they had some they had some good stuff happening, but boy, they had some they had some bad stuff happening too. That's not even common amongst the Gentiles. That's where we're going. Exactly. So 1 Corinthians 5 1 is on page 1401 in the New King James, if you have it there. Looks like you guys have you all have your own Bible? Sarah, you got the New King James, the, the provided, I should call it the provided New King James Bible. In the provided New King James Bible, it's on page 1401. You know, we could. That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. In fact, we did that at the beginning. Remember that? We did that back at the beginning. We used to say, if you need a Bible, lift a hand, we'll get a Bible to you. Yeah. We always had Bibles sitting back here in case someone wanted a Bible. I don't know. Let's start it again. (laughs) All right. Verse one. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as it is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife and you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Hello? That's, that's the Apostle Paul. Well, this church has blatant sin in it. Obviously, right? And Paul said, get it out. And get him out. <laughs> he didn't say just put up with it, right? No big deal. No big deal. Just, just let people do what they want to do. No, he said, get him out of the church now. Hello? Now, one interesting thing, I think it was Rick Renner who said it. According to church history, this church in Corinth was known for a slogan, all things are lawful to me. All things. And uh, I think it goes right along with today's, you know, heavy hyper grace teaching. I believe that's what they were in. And they could believe they could do anything they want and still have God's favor upon them. Mm. So Paul, you know, being a good apostle, and it wasn't a pastor, he was an apostle over pastors, like Timothy, he corrected this horrible doctrine uh, so they would would make heaven. (laughs) Right? And we we, we could go into that, because I don't think we're going to go into that tonight, but he he said he's going to turn this man over to Satan. For the destruction of his flesh, that his spirit might be saved on the day of salvation. So in other words, he could miss heaven because of his sin. 
Hello? That goes against much of the church teaching you hear today. So the enemy, of course, wants us to accept sin. Right? As normal. That's just normal. That's fine. The enemy knows a little leaven, right? Remember Jesus? A little leaven? Lump, leavens, a little leaven? <laughs> a little leaven? Leavens the whole lump? A little yeast, right? Yeah. You don't need much yeast to, to make the bed, right? bread rise, do you? One and a half teaspoons to make that bread rise. That's not much. But a little bit of sin, ooh, that can mess up the church real good. Or real bad, I should say. <laughs> so the enemy loves it when we say, do whatever you want. It's okay. You're covered by grace. Uh, that's the enemy's territory. And Paul, of course, is making corrections here. And so go down to verse 11, 1 Corinthians 5.11. Turn the page. And you'll see some more of Paul's truth here. <laughs> but now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler, which I think is like an angry, anger, anger person, cause revelries, <laughs> or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. Yeah, this is real biblical truth here, right? Hello? Yeah. This isn't false teaching. This isn't filled with errors when you turn on the, the television and you watch a preacher and you're like, wait a second, what? Huh? Why don't you preach this? How come they never preach that? Because <laughs> they know people in the church will get mad at them. Well, it's true. Yeah. I preach things all the time that people get mad at me about. What am I supposed to do? Not preach the Bible? No, I'm just going to preach in the Bible. Well, they don't preach this because they have sexually immoral people in the church. They have adulterers in the church. They have drunkards in the church. Drunk, drunkenness is highly accepted now in the church. Hello? It's highly accepted now. It's not supposed to be accepted. Come on. We have a lot of old people we used to know, you know. And they now, nowadays they put pictures on Facebook all the time about their beer they're drinking. Like, what? What? No. No. Paul said not to even eat with that person. Phew. Not to even eat with the person who is, is in willful sin. Well, today, of course, people would call that hate speech. They call this hate speech. This is hate speech. Well, if they want to be immoral, let them be immoral. If they want to be an adulterer, let them be. If they want to be a drunk, let them be a drunk. Hello? But no, it's not hate speech, it's truth. And this is the love of God right here from, from the Apostle Paul. Why? Because if he knows if sin spreads through the church, leaven, yeast, it spreads. So you got someone over here who's willfully sinning. And that person now infiltrates someone else's life and causes them to sin. And that person infiltrates someone's life and causes them to sin. And pretty soon... You got, you had one drunk in the church, now you got 15. Because he kept saying, well, come on over, we're going to have a good time tonight. Hello? That's how it goes. And that's why Jesus said what he said. That's why Paul said what he said. A little leaven, leavens the whole lump. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6, right after this, right? And, and 2 Corinthians actually brings about some of the, some of the um, solution for this man, but we won't get into that. But in, in 2 Corinthians, it shows that it looks like this guy repented. Yeah. Because he says, 
he says, hey, comfort him. Bring him back in and comfort him and exhort him. So instead of kicking him out, he repented. <laughs> he got things right. Amen. That's right. But here we see in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, uh, a little more about who we're supposed to be as believers. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Are you his people? Yeah. Are you a temple? Yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this, is, this is a church building and we, it's also could be called a temple. In fact, a lot of churches down south, it's a temple. They call them temples. <laughs> temple, temple of glory. Temp Pentecostal temple, right? They, got, they, got, they, they you like to use that down south more. Like, they like to use reverend down south. Yeah, instead of pastor, it's reverend. We used that a lot when I was down there. It was reverend. Reverend. It's, you know, different, a little different culture down there in the south. So they like temple. Well, temple's a Bible word. So our, uh, this building is a, is a temple, and we, we, we keep this temple clean. Ooh, that's right. Every Saturday. We got some cleaners right here, right? We got some cleaners. We got some cleaning team right here. Some cleaning team right here. Clean the temple. In fact, we keep it really clean, right? We get it nice and clean. And, and if you came in here and this was a mess on Sunday morning, you'd be like, what is happening in here? What is happening? This is a mess. I don't want to come to this church. It's a mess. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in churches where I'm like, wait a second, what's happening here? I'm like, why is the garbage laying on the side of the wall in the church? There's garbage bags filled up on the side in the sanctuary. I'm like, what's happening here? What's happening here? It's not good. No, no, we keep the temple clean. And we are temples of God, and we got to keep the temple clean. <laughs> Come on. That means we don't participate in the dirt, defile the temple. Right? I just saw something about, you know, this is, of course, Catholic, but Catholic, uh, they allowed like a evil music video to be filmed in a Catholic church. And I read that they were going to re-bless everything in the church because they allowed a, a secular artist who has demonic lyrics and weird stuff do a music video in the church. And someone got in trouble. Yeah, some bishop allowed it and he got in trouble. And then they said, we're going to go back and we're going to bless everything in here. So however they start, you know, a, church, a Catholic church, they must bless everything, or every whatever, you know. Every, get the corner blessed. Well, we don't want to defile the temple because no, right. we're temples. Yeah. We're the real temples, right? Amen. We're the real temples. And so we're living sacrifices. Amen. That's what the Bible says, right? Was that, where's that? Romans 12, right? Be a living sacrifice unto God. Your reasonable service. Well, duty's probably NIV. You read NIV? No, I'm going to have to kick you out of the church. <laughs> It was funny. It was funny. No, no. NIV. Reading NIV. Oh, I get what you're saying. That was funny. <laughs> oh, I don't really like NIV. They, 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 they're, it's very liberal. Now you tell me. I've been saying it for years. What are you done? Where you been? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's what they leave out, basically. It's what they leave out. It's mostly what they leave out. Uh, several of those translations leave out things that I'm like, whoa, wow, it's gone. That's weird. Oh, whole, 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 whole passages. Gone. Not, not in the Bible. Not even there. Mark 16. It's like, where'd it go? Yeah, it, it, some, of it, some of it gets a little weird. But... We are to live lives that please God, amen? amen? And use our temple for his glory. 
And so that's what we're talking about tonight. Laid aside. Now, let's go to 2 Corinthians 7, 1. That would be the next chapter. <laughs> all right, all right. 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Notice this. This is, this is something right here. This is something that will blow away so much church false teaching out there. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What? No, it's all up to God. Everything, he just does it. He just does it all. He just does everything. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I do. He does it all. Well, did you read this verse? Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. All right, there's a, there should be a fear of God. Yeah, that's right. Amen. A fear of God. Ooh, boy, you read the Bible, you have a fear of God. <laughs> Woo! Well, read Revelation, right? You just read it, right? Woo! Read Revelation, you, you have a fear of God when you're done with the book of Revelation. You're like, whoa, whoa, how come, how come they didn't tell me this? How come my pastor didn't tell me about this? How come? <laughs> I, I thought I could do whatever I want. And then I read Revelation and it said, no sexually immoral person will inherit the kingdom of God. No idolater will inherit the kingdom of God. No liar will inherit the kingdom of God. No coward will inherit the kingdom of God. Woo! What? Hello. Right? That's, that's serious stuff. That's real serious. So it says here, we make the choice. To what? Not, not, not to become a saved. Amen? No. You, you get saved, you get reborn. But we still have a lot going on in us that, that wants to follow the world, way of the world. So we choose to step away from sin. Right? And remember, this is written to believers. And not only believers, tongue talkers, spirit filled on fire believers, come on, who prophesied in church, who spoke in tongues in church and, and interpreted in church. And he had to tell them, you got to cleanse yourself from all filthiness. Come on. That's what he's telling. He's telling this, this wild, <laughs> this wild church. Come on, that, we got a choice. We can, choo we can choose a lifestyle that pleases the Lord or doesn't please the Lord, right? Even, even if we're spirit filled. We can still choose actions that do not please God. Come on. That, that's important to know. No matter what, we can choose actions that, will, that can uh, glorify him. Or not. Right? We can come in church and we can speak in tongues and interpret tongues, but we're still supposed to choose a, a lifestyle of holiness. Right? Now, praying in tongues is going to help you, build you up on your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. Jude 120. <laughs> We've made it famous around here. Well, the Bible made it famous first, of course. <laughs> well, we've talked about it a lot. I mentioned it quite a few times. Have you noticed? <laughs> Everyone around here said, no, Jude 120. Yeah. <laughs> it's, only one it's only one chapter. But what often happens is people start to compromise their belief in the name of compassion. Come on. Well, it's not hurting anybody. So they can do that. That's fine. It's not, they're not hurting anybody. They're enjoying their lifestyle. Or take it for yourself, right? Yeah, I, you know, it, it doesn't hurt anybody what I'm doing. I'm not hurting anybody. Hello? 
I, I just want to be who I am. This is who I am. I want to be like this. So we compromise our belief, even if we learned it out of the Bible. Come on. We got it out of the Bible, and then we compromise because of the influence of the world or influence of our friend, influence of somebody. Of course, the devil. <laughs> that says, it's okay, you can do that. It's all right. You're not hurting anybody. Hello? Well, no, Jesus never called us to embrace sin. He said to the woman caught in adultery, what did he say? Go and sin no more. And so what does Jesus always do? And he's calling people to repentance, which again goes with revelation, right? Repent. He told the churches, I like what you're doing here. I like what you're doing here. Now repent of this. Repent. The church is called to repent. Not just the sinner, the church is. <laughs> Yet you could go in most churches and you'll and never hear that word anymore. They've wiped it. They've wiped a lot of words out. They don't like to talk about hell. They don't like to talk about the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. The blood of Jesus. I said it wrong. I know. Yeah, they don't like to talk about the blood. Because people get offended by the blood. When you start talking about the blood, people get offended. You start talking about hell, and people are like, oh, don't offend me. Come on. Repent. You need to repent. Oh, no. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. doesn't matter what I do. Well, why won't you read the book of Revelation? Why won't you read it? Come on. If Jesus told the church of Laodicea that he would spit them out of his mouth, then uh, does that apply to the church today? Yes. It still applies to the church. If you're in the body, it applies. Amen. Amen. And I don't want to be spit out, do you? No. So what do we do? What do we do? We repent. Amen. That's the way out. And that's, like I've said before, that's one of the greatest words that there is. Yeah. Yet, people don't like to even mention it in church. Yeah. That's one of the greatest words there is. Ooh. Repent. Ooh. It's a great, it's a wonderful word. Because you can be in a mess. You, you, this man who was caught, you know, in sin. And, and Paul had to rebuke him and rebuke the church for embracing sin. All he had to do was, and it looks like he did in 2 Corinthians, like he repented. Which means he stopped. <laughs> Come on. He turned away from the sin. And what, what did that do? That brought him right back into the sheepfold. That brought him right back into the company of the church, of the body, because he repented. And so what if he doesn't repent? Not good. Paul was turning him over to Satan. So he wasn't going to make it, at least physically, he wasn't going to make it very long. If Paul turns you over to Satan, watch out. <laughs> That's bad stuff. You go and you go and you're done. When Paul, Paul turns you over, boo, watch out. Come on now. I, I, I don't know if anybody else has ever done that. I've never heard another story like that. But Paul is, without a doubt, the greatest apostle that's ever walked the earth. And he had powers that we necessarily don't have. Why? Well, a lot of people, you know, there, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a levels, right? There's levels of spiritual authority. And God doesn't allow this level to turn someone over to Satan. Hello? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you got to rise in levels before you, you can do that. In other words, Paul was uh, perfected in the sense of the word. That best, he was completely developed. We talked about, we've been talking about Sunday, right? Mature and completely developed. You get an adult who's completely developed. 
Well, you get a spiritual person completely developed. I don't, I, we don't have many examples, but Paul is one of them. Completely developed. Radically saved. Radically saved. Radically on fire for God. Spiritually developed. I mean, he went, he went to, he went, he said, I was, I saw a man who was caught up, or I knew a man who was caught up to the third heaven. Everybody, every, he said, I knew a man. Every Bible scholar I've ever read says, he's talking about himself. But he didn't want to take glory for himself. I knew a man who was caught up to the third heaven. He saw Jesus. He talked to Jesus. Come on. So did he have some authority we don't have? Yeah. Yeah. Could he have turned that man over to Satan? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. See, spiritual things are real, right? What about Ananias and Sapphira? I'm going off, but you know, that's fine. Ananias and Sapphira, right? They brought the, the money for the sale of their property to Peter, and they, they said they were giving them all of the money from the sale of the property. I right, remember? And Ananias said, and Peter said, is that all of it? Yeah, that's it. That's everything. Why do you lie to the Holy Spirit? Shroom! Falls dead right there. And they, he said, take him out and bury him. That's some power. And his wife comes in. Did you sell the property for this much? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why do you lie to the Holy Spirit? Vroom. Take her out and bury her by her husband. Phineas <laughs> with the spear. But see the power? Peter had some power, right? He was, he was definitely up there in, in, in the, in the uh, ranks, right? We talk about it around here as well. We don't know what rank a lot of people are at. You know, I said, maybe Don's a general. Yeah. A lot of times we don't know what everybody's rank is, but God knows. God knows the ranks. And a lot of times it's going to show up eventually, right? It's going to show up. But Paul was definitely high rank. High rank in general in the body. And really, you, you, you can't find anybody like him throughout church history. But we were talking about repentance, right? And Paul got this man to repent so he didn't have to have him physically die so he could be saved and make heaven. So repentance, that's a good word. That's a really good word. Many, many won't preach it any longer. Uh, but because of that, I, I don't doubt at all, some people will never see eternity. That sat in churches and lived in sin. And the preacher never said, you need to repent. That's, that's a bad place to be as a preacher. Because we've been reading it on Sunday. James, James said teachers will be, have a stricter judgment. That not many of you become teachers because there will be a stricter judgment. So the, the person who was living in, a, let's just say, homosexual. I told you the story. There was a story recently I heard and they said a homosexual came in their church and was just was in the church and then they told the person you know that lifestyle is not correct in God's eyes and the person said really no one told me and they repented they repented and got their life right with God and stayed in the church what would a lot of people do? Well, that, I, I'm going to do what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to do. Well, uh, go on your way, right? I've said it many times. <laughs> See you later. But if you don't want to repent, then you don't really want to live for Jesus. Yeah. Really, repentance is, is a, is a, should be normal life for the Christian. It's normal life, right? 
You say something that you know was not right. You think something, that's not right. I repent of that. Right? You do something, oh, that wasn't right. I repent of that. <laughs> so you're, you're recognizing that doesn't agree with God's ways. Right? That doesn't agree with him, and that's good. Right? Because if you're going along and you're not repenting ever, you're probably not recognizing. Those words, they weren't right. You should have recognized, right? That action wasn't right. You should have recognized it. Come on. Amen? Amen. That's right. We should recognize it and repent. Amen. Why? Because we want to keep our temple clean. <laughs> That's a good title too right there. Keep the temple clean. We got another verse. You want another verse? Yeah. Hebrews 12. Hebrews the coffee. Oh. Griffin's like, why did you have to say it? Why'd you do it? Why? He doesn't like brewed coffee. Hebrews twelve fourteen. What page is that in the provided New King James Bible? Uh, one four seven eight. Hebrews twelve fourteen. Fourteen seventy nine. <laughs> pursue peace with all people that's good right and holiness without which no one will see the Lord did you hear that woo woo wow looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble and by this, many become defiled. Didn't we just talk about defiling the temple? Ooh, bitterness. That'll cause some defilement, right? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance though he sought it diligently with tears. Woo! Whoa! Blah, 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 heavy, right? That's heavy. That's heavy stuff. People don't like to read the heavy stuff. They, they, like, the, they like dessert all the time. People want dessert. This is, this is not dessert. This is the meat. Right? If you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you read these and you go, Woo! I'll take that. I'll take it. Amen. I receive it, Lord. I'll, I'll take it. Amen. Right? It says we got to pursue a holy life. It says those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Huh? Wait a second. How come most of the church nowadays teaches prayer, prayer, you're good, just go on your way? Hello? Hello? It says those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Wow. That's the truth from the word. Amen. You can't get more plain than that. That's plain. That's plain. Make it plain, pastor. Yep. <laughs> That's plain. So Jesus did not preach acceptance of everything as some would have us believe. Right? Jesus just accepts people right where they're at. Well, he accepts you where you're at. And then he says, change. <laughs> he says, like the, it's the, the example, you don't, you don't clean the fish until you get him in the net and get him on the boat. Right? That's why coming to church is so important, being in the body. You get in the boat, and there's some cleaning happening. <laughs> Come on now. The fish got to be caught and then cleaned afterwards. And that's what Jesus wants to happen. He wants the fish to be caught and then get cleaned, right? Peter was a mess. But he brought him on the boat. He brought him into the team. And he taught him for three years and dealt with stuff. Come on, Peter. Peter. Oh, Peter. Peter, really? <laughs> but Peter got it. Peter got it. He got it. Hallelujah. 
It took him a little while, but he got it. Praise God. He got it. And so we don't have to clean the fish until they get in the boat. So we don't, ex we don't accept sin like, like what we just read in 1 Corinthians, right? Now, if the sinner comes in to the body, we accept them right where they're at. You're welcome. You're welcome to come back. You're welcome. And then if they start bringing their sin in, that's a different story. And they start infiltrating sin. That's a different story. See, if they come and they want to learn, they want to grow, they want to get cleaned up, they want to pursue holiness, cleanse themselves, as the Bible says, cleanse yourself from all filthiness, right? That's good. Because they, they want to serve the Lord. And they want to be holy before the Lord. And they're, they're repentant. Because Jesus preached repentance. He was always preaching repentance. And that means we, we, we turn away from it, right? That, that we turn away from the sin. That's repentance. That's true repentance, right? That's true repentance. Now, probably some of you are thinking, I don't, I don't, I don't commit any big sins. <laughs> but, you know, I, I always find it important to point, to point this out again. I know we pointed out before, but it's so important to understand this. To define sin... You got to look at you got to look at Romans 14:23. Because this is so important if you want to do greater works. Right? That's where we're headed, right? This is so important right here. Romans 14:23 is on page 1394. You were just looking at it. Ah, yeah. on a, uh, a TV show or something? Video? Oh, wow. Well, that'd be fun to watch. Yeah, I watched it. Nice, nice. So, Romans 14 23, in the, uh, I was going to read the easy to read version, but first we'll read the New King James. Because this gets a little blind to us because it's, you know, you know, the wording. But he who doubts. He's talking about the, the food offered to idols, right? He who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. In other words, don't eat that, don't, don't eat that food sacrificed to idols if, it, if, it, if you can't do it in faith, right? If you can't play, pray over that food and know it's blessed and you had faith, then don't eat it. For whatever is not from faith is sin. Right? Now, in the easy to read, you like this. But anyone who eats something without being sure it is right is doing wrong. That is because they did not believe it was right. And if you do anything that you believe is not right, it is sin. It's a little easier to understand, right? If you don't believe it's right, it's sin. Now, we know from the word there are many things that are sin, right? We, could, we can make a list. Drunkenness is sin. Adultery is sin. Homosexuality is sin. Listed in God's word. It says it is wrong. It says it's sin. Stealing is sin. Covetousness is sin. Murder is sin. Right? Abusive. Being abusive is sin. Cheating is sin. Those are all, those are obvious ones and we could go through more, right? Obvious sins. And so lying. Things that are called sin by God, we do not need to question them at all, do we? Yeah. Do we need to say, well, I just don't know. I just don't know if adultery is sin. I just don't know. I'm just not sure. No. Drunkenness. We, well, I'm just not sure. I just, you know, I kind of like, I kind of like it. I kind of like getting drunk. You know, it's kind of fun. You know, I'm just not sure if it's sin. No, it's sin. The Bible says it's sin. Yeah, amen. That's it. It's sin. And all of sin, of course, can be forgiven, right? That's good. That's good news. That's part of the gospel. That we can be forgiven of anything we've done in these areas that are called sin. By God. Obvious. So God's not trying to condemn us. He, always, he just wants us to be repent. Repent and live a holy life. Keep our temple clean. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Okay? 
So sometimes we don't know if something is a sin. And this, this verse comes in right there. The key is if you don't believe it's right, don't do it. <laughs> if you don't believe it's right, don't do it. It's sin. All right? If we aren't confident that what we're doing is a good and then we do it, we've sinned. Whatsoever not is faith is sin. And when we do that, we get gray in our thinking. And it robs us of confidence to do the greater works. See, we went there, didn't we? We got there. Let me give you a few examples, right? There's a couple of examples. So even in the New Covenant, some people believe it is wrong to eat pork. Now, Old Covenant, that was wrong, right? They believe they didn't eat pork. It was against the law. The Old Testament law, right? Well, even in the New Covenant, some people have a conviction about eating pork because they read it in the Old Covenant. And they will tell you straight out, do not eat pork. That's sin. Don't eat pork. What are you doing? <laughs> well, in the New Covenant, it's been cleansed. Paul said, you can eat anything. Give thanks for it and eat. But some people have whatever it is. It may be something else, right? Uh, some people are, you know, against, uh, um, what is it, the shellfish? Or what is it? Shellfish, right? Like lobster or anything, anything of the bottom of the sea. They say, oh, no, no, no. No, that's, that's sin. Don't eat that. Well, to them, if it is sin in their heart, they better not eat. Right? If you have a conviction about eating pork and you eat pork, guess what? You're going to get gray and you get, you're going to lose confidence. And you're going to be unclear because you've sinned. And then you would repent. Right? Say, say you had a thing about pork and you went over to someone's house and they fed pork and you're like, oh, I'm just going to try this pork. You got home. You're like, oh, I feel so bad. I ate pork. I don't know. I'm not supposed to eat pork. I'm not supposed to eat pork. And you repent of eating that pork. Now, I'm not saying eating pork is wrong. I believe it's been cleansed in the New Covenant. I believe all food has been cleansed. Give thanks for it. You know, give thanks to God. But what I'm saying is, uh, the other example, I've used this before, is it was amazing to me back in, when I first got saved back at Faith Center, there was a man in the church. I don't remember what happened to him because I, I, you know, he, he, I don't know. He was there, I think, while we were there for a while, anyhow. <laughs> and he, he believed it was wrong to go over the speed limit at all. At all. Like, if it's 25, like down here, you go 26, you have sinned against God himself. And he told me that. And he said, you cannot break the speed limit, for that's the government, laws of the government. And the Bible says, obey the government, obey the authorities. So if you go over that speed limit, you are sinning against God. And I'm like, okay, brother. <laughs> Now, I, I think going the speed limit's a good thing. And my kids will tell you, I, I usually go under the speed limit. <laughs> and Paige, Paige, you watch this later. You get, yeah, she makes fun of me. You know, we're driving the road. Boy, you just drive so slow. But <laughs> you too, man. Right? Yeah. But if you believe it's wrong to go over the speed limit, don't do it. Because when you go on 26 and the 25, you're going to have, ooh, I'm sinning against God. Come on. But see how, this can, see how this can play out in our hearts? Now, the best thing, I believe, is to get good teaching, good doctrine. Like about food, right? It's been cleansed. And then believe what the Bible says. Because Paul said everything, just, everything's cleansed by thanks. Give thanks unto God for it. It's cleansed. And the speed limit thing, I believe we should do the speed limit, basically. But there's sometimes you do need to pass them, Right? But sometimes you have to get past something. You have to, you have to make some moves and, and go under or over the speed limit. Yeah. But I, I believe basically, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go the speed limit. But if I go 26 and the 25, I'm not going to think I sinned against God. Because yeah. yeah. you're coasting down this hill, and I see it now they got this light down here, this, 
This lit up one that lights up and says, thank you for going 25. It says, thank you, thank you, it blinks green. And as soon as you hit 26, it goes red, starts flashing at you. I'm like, I'm coming down a hill. I'm going 26 now because I'm coasting a little bit down the hill. Now, if your dad pulls me over, I'm good. No, I don't. <laughs> I know he won't for 26. Now, now 35 and a 25, he may care. That's pushing it there. That's pushing it. That thing down there? No. How fast were you going? Well, that is, that's pushing it. That's true. That's true. It is down a hill. Was that your excuse? Oh, <laughs> to the police. Uh, but I was coming down a hill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here you go. Here you go. It is rough. It is rough. Because it is true. You're just coasting down the hill. You go a little quicker. You know. But you don't see what I'm saying. If, if we keep doing what we believe is wrong, we start to sear our conscience. We got a conscience that says that's wrong, right? God put a conscience in everybody. Everybody has a conscience. That's why people, when you, that's one, re, that's another thing for God to be existing. That's one of the proofs like C.S. Lewis used a lot. Why, why, why do you think it's wrong to murder? Why, why do you think it's wrong to murder? Because God put it in you. The conscience is already there. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be born again. You, you don't have to even go to church. You don't have to be any religion at all. But all of a sudden, how come you know it's wrong to murder? Because yeah. God put it in you. Amen. So as we do wrong that goes against our heart, we sear our conscience. Yeah. That's how people become serial liars. Because they lie once. They lie again. Then they lie again. They're like, this is working pretty good. And they lie again. They lie again. And pretty soon, lying is just absolutely normal. And they don't even have a conviction anymore. They have no conviction about lying because they have seared their conscience. That's dangerous. Then you can't hear from him that you are in the wrong. And then you can't repent. If you don't know you're wrong any longer, you can't repent. Look at the evil we see right now in the world. I mean, heinous acts of murder and, and absolute disgustingness, and they have no remorse about it at all. Murdering people, slaughtering people, burning people alive just happened. This all just happened. And they have no remorse at all. That's sick. And they have seared their conscience against what he said that was in them. Come on. You ain't going to hear God any longer. Keep searing that conscience like a steak, right? Get it all seared. It's all sealed up in there. You get your conscience all seared up. You ain't going to hear from God anymore. So that's why we want to be very repentant. <laughs> and if something is wrong in our heart, whether it's simple like a speed limit, Come on. Or definitely, come on, definitely anything God said is sin. Yeah, amen. We say, God said that's sin. I repent of doing that. Yeah. Come on. Then we keep, we keep our ears wide open unto God. Come on, when we do that. Hello? So if we stop that action that's bringing condemnation to us, searing us, Come on, we start to heal up. And we begin growing again. Hello? We begin growing again in God. This is good news. Come on. Anything that we know is wrong, we stop doing it, we repent of it, and then we start growing again in Christ. Come on. And, and, and we hear God's voice clearer. We have, we have close fellowship with our God. That's what you want, right? You want to know God better? You want to hear God better? I'm giving you a huge key today to do that. Anything, come on, anything that's in the way that makes 
brings condemnation in there, repent. Which leads us to our, of course, our Hebrews 12.1, which was where we mentioned at the beginning. <laughs> right? Lay aside. Lay it aside, right? Lay it aside. Hebrews 12.1. This is big. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses... No, we, we got the old the old saints that want them before us surrounding us. Amen. Cheering us on from the grandstands of heaven. Let, we're still in the race. We're still running around the track. Amen. They're sitting down. They're going, oh, we're done. But keep running, guys. Keep running. <laughs> keep doing it for Jesus. Go. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. See, Weight. Even the weight, right? And the sin. Picturing the runner with the weight on, right? They run, they have their weight on, and then they get the weight off, and they run faster. I bet I've done that. It's cool. It's kind of cool. You're like, whoa, whoa. And then you take the weight off. You're like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, I feel so fast. <laughs> Lay aside the weight. You do that in wrestling? You put weights on your legs or nothing? Okay. Let us lay us. So it doesn't have to even be a sin. It can just be a weight. Yeah. A weight. Something that holds us back from God. It might be a BFF you got to get rid of. <laughs> that could be a real weight, right? Well, it could. A lot of things can be a weight that aren't necessarily sin, but they're a weight. And they're holding us back from doing our race. Come on. A lot of things hold us back from our race because they're just weights. Just weights. They're not even sin. They're just weights. And if we let go of that weight, we've got to run better for Jesus. Yeah. Ooh. And the sin, come on, which so easily ensnares us, traps us. Easily. Yikes. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. See, we're not going to run the race properly if we don't lay aside the weights and the sin. Come on. So that's why I'm saying tonight. We've got to lay aside every weight and sin. That easily ensnares us. Let go of the weights. Let go of the sin. The big sin. The small sin. Anything that brings condemnation. Anything that weighs us down. Come on. Because why? We're getting darker when we do something that goes against our hearts. Goes against our conscience. We, 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 we get darker and we don't see clear. But as soon as we repent, we can see clear again. Amen. Come on. As soon as we let go of that sin, we can see clear. We can hear we got our ears cleaned out. Cleaned out. I got my ears cleaned out. <laughs> I won't go into that. It was a mess. I went deaf for a week. But, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was crazy. Yeah, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you a warning. I'll give you a warning. <laughs> but God will speak to us. Clear, right? See, we get rid of the weights. We get rid of the sin that's so easy and snares as God can speak. Well, he is speaking, but we can hear. Right? Some of you wonder, why am I not hearing God clear? We found an answer. Lay it aside. Lay aside the weight. Lay aside the sin. Come on. And you're going to hear him. You've been given an answer tonight. Come on. Don't let it just be another Message from PV. Come on. Take it in, right? Take it in. Take it in your heart. Let it, let it dwell in there. Come on. And, when, and this week, the rest of this week, when something comes up and you're like, ooh, yeah, that's not, that's not right. Repent. Lay it down. Lay it aside. 
kick it up to the curb <laughs> and say, I'm not going to do that. I repent, Father. I repent of that. Come on. And then, come on, then we can do the great works, the greater works. Because we're going to get cleared up. We'll get it cleared. Get our ears clear. <laughs> come on. It's essential. It's essential. Who, 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 has the most, who had the most power to ever walk the earth? Jesus. And he lived perfect. He had no weight, no sin. He had perfect clarity. That's pretty cool. Perfect clarity. Because nothing was bogging him down. Nothing. Ooh, glory. Well, God's calling us to that. Amen? Amen. He's calling us to that too. He wants us to hear him clear. Say this prayer after me tonight. Heavenly Father, I want to hear your voice clearly. I choose to lay aside every weight and sin that ensnares me. I choose to be a living sacrifice. I choose your ways over my ways. I choose a holy lifestyle that honors you. Forgive me where I have messed up. Thank you for cleansing me from all sin. Speak to me. Show me what you want me to do. I receive it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's give him glory. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you. You keep leading us on the right path and you get us to the right place. So we thank you for this word tonight. We thank you for correction. We thank you for discipline, Father. And we are going to hear you better and better as we lay aside those weights and sins. And we repent when we need to repent. We thank you for that ability, Father, to repent and not have our conscience seared by sin. We love you, Father. We give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen.